Yo, what's going on today, guys? It is Sam, better known as Samito, and today I've got five tips for Fortune's Keep that will help you have more success on the map. Number one, and this is gonna be really important, avoid no man's land. And in this map, no man's land is the outskirts around winery, right? I almost have had no success fighting down towards camp, trying to rotate out of there. You can get shot from almost every POI on the map, including lighthouse to your left, winery on your right. Fights down there just don't seem very productive. So if you want to go down to that far east part of the map, just do it at the very start of the game to try to get your boxes quickly and get the freaking heck out of there. It's very, very hard to actually make longer rotations out of that area due to lack of cover and all the big high grounds on the map that can actually shoot down at you. So I try to avoid this part of the map at all costs. Now the Bay Area, which is a little bit towards the north where you can rotate up to keep and around that side is a little bit more okay. It's more so the southern side, the southeastern side of the map where you can go around the lighthouse right where you have to be really careful because you're literally just a sitting duck in the middle of the street if you try to rotate through there so i would avoid that part of the map at all costs right if you want to go there go early to get a contract get your box go with the chopper so you can get out that's fine but if you don't have that i'd avoid that place at all costs so stay away from particularly the southeastern part of the map until they update it to be a little bit more cover friendly tip number two is going to help you get boxes down faster if you've been struggling to find a location there actually is a table at the top of keep i'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it where there's a ton of money on the top and there's actually a secret door in the back of that where if you collect the wine bottles you can get some exclusive weapons including a a melee weapon that also acts as a throwing knife it's pretty cool um but yeah just a quick warning about this part though it generally is really really hot and it's very hard to rotate to one of the three buys that actually can spawn at keep so this generally tends to be higher risk especially since there's so many places that you can actually camp at keep not to mention there are more rooftops that you can climb on in that map than in Ezio Auditori's Assassin's Creed 2 game right and those of you old school guys Guys who loved Assassin's Creed 2, one of my favorite games of all time. Fantastic game, right? You know, you gotta be careful, and it's a very risky position to actually take. So, if you're gonna do it, make sure you stack with your teammates and rotate out carefully, really looking around at the high grounds to make sure you don't get lasered because there's so many people that usually land there. It's kind of like, it's almost like a budget version of Superstore, um, just in, in Fortune's Keep. So, be very careful landing in that keep area, but it's a great way to get money incredibly quickly. It's one of the fastest ways I've seen to consistently get enough money for a low out on the entire map especially when contracts at the start seem to be very scarce tip number three is the mid map rotations right what i've learned in terms of how fights usually go on this map is that middle strip that goes over grotto where um what that that big gatehouse looks down over and the two towers on the side of keep look down you want to be really careful fighting there right you either want to fight inside the gatehouse walls or kind of on the far right side of the street where you're under that little rig so you can't get shot from opposite sides. The one thing I've noticed about this map that's different from Rebirth Island is that when you fought in prison, you could rotate through the middle of the map and just stay under prison. And the only place you would have to fight is your actual level. But since this part of the map is wide open, if you're not careful, you can easily get lasered from one of the like infinite high grounds, it seems like surrounding your area right so you want to make sure you're out of line of sight from at least one of them so you're not getting shot from literally every single side right so if you want to fight in the outdoor part make sure you swing almost across the cove you know the little hole where you can drop into grotto make sure you swing and fight either on that street where you have cover from keep and gatehouse or fight like literally on the gatehouse wall and rotate across the map that way. The one place you don't want to be is where the buy station spawn right in the middle where both sides, including winery in town, where really you have four sides of the map that can all look at you and shoot down at you. You cannot fight there because you'll get third partied almost every single time by somebody just camping up on one of the high grounds lasering you, right? Um, a good way to help avoid that is to run the high alert perk it helps me see when enemies are actually looking at me from a distance so i know when i can run away and out and get out of their line of sight um but if you don't want to run that just in general try to avoid 
um, those parts of the maps, and it's not really a scummy thing to do to third party there if you need to wait, because you're never gonna win that in a normal fight anyway, at least your average player, like, if, if you're a crackhead player, you might be able to, but I wouldn't bank on winning that fight consistently, so stay out of the middle part of the street, you will die way more often than you win that. Tip number four is a new contract has been introduced called Black Markets, which you can buy Foresight from, which will show you every single circle for only 10 grand. Specialist is 15, but Foresight, especially in trios and quads, can be incredibly, like having full knowledge of where the circles are gonna rotate allows you to play your play style much better than than like anyone else in that lobby, right? So if you want to play fast paced, you can still rush into teams knowing where the circle is. But if you're more of a slower paced player, being able to get this foresight is actually not that difficult at all. You don't even really need a chopper. Obviously, if you have a helicopter, it helps a lot. But in the mid to late games in particular, when a lot of teams have been exited off the map and you have a contract bonus of about like maybe one scab or one bounty or one supply run, which are also great contracts to go for because they tend to spawn like right next to each other. Um, getting that black market uh, contract tends to be really, really good. And it's very easy to get foresight, which will allow you to set up in the ways you need to to win many circles in advance, giving you a big advantage over every team in the lobby. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to use that to camp, right? Because if you're like me and you want to get foresight, I'm going to use it to figure out what team to go hold to get more kills. It basically opens up your options big time and it's actually a pretty easy thing to get so towards circle two or three after you've done one contract look to pick up that black market supply run right because even if you can't get it right even if you can't get it it goes away in about a minute and a half anyway so it's not like it's completely ruining your game doing black markets in the mid game is something that if you have the opportunity to do it always 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 pick it up because it will help your game so much. Tip number five, and this is particularly for the points indoors and winery, keep especially and town especially, right? Make sure you stack with your team, right? If you see a teammate around you or any of your squads that you like to run with, a crucial part of these parts of the maps, which tend to have indoor parts that are way more like a labyrinth than actual standard houses that we saw in Verdanks, that we saw in Caldera, that we saw in Rebirth Island, right? These buildings are not nearly as easy to push and they have way more nooks and crannies where people can camp or shoot down at you or do whatever. And the best way that we found to deal with this is just stack up on each other, give each other cover fire, right? Obviously the high alert perk is very, very useful as well as running heartbeat sensors. You really saw snapshot grenades take over on Rebirth Island with restock, but now we're finding way more use for heartbeats, especially with restock and snapshots both being nerfed. Heartbeats are not necessarily back, but they've helped me out a ton to at least know where players are around me so I have a general idea so I don't get shot in the back. So running those heartbeat sensors, stacking up with your team, especially in these new POIs, that, like I said, are almost straight out of Assassin's Creed 2, right? Or Modern Warfare 2 Favela, where there's all these roofs and, and small rooms where people can camp in and jump you. It's almost like it's guerrilla warfare. And to be honest, there's not much that you can do to actually predict it other than have the right equipment and have the right playstyle, right? Take it slow, use your heartbeat, use your snapshots, buy UAVs, and if you're gonna push through these areas, make sure you're checking them pretty consistently just so you don't get caught off guard. I see so many players consistently, even myself, man, my, my KD is like over four this season. I'm consistently caught out where I just have no clue, especially on a new map, where these kids are shooting me from. The kids are shooting me from top churches if they're Jesus reincarnated, right? And I can't see him. I don't know. There's like 10 angles he could take up there on that spot alone. And there's also 10 more on my right, on my left. It's way too much to keep track of, right? Especially for your average player. So run your beat. Try to be aware of where people are at and stack up, especially when you're running through indoors where there's all these staircases and corners you got to cover. Do it together. Check your beats. Stay disciplined and make sure you're not just running in like a chicken with your head cut off because unlike Rebirth Island, and that won't work here. All right, guys, that's five tips for Fortune's Keep that should help you play better. It really helped my play a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and click on screen now to check out the previous Warzone Tips video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.